All right, so we've already covered 10.1 with our PowerPoint, so we're picking up at 10.2. Um, so astronomers, of course, called these unusual stars that seem to move planets, which means wanderers. So the inner planets are where we're going to start. There's four of them, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. So starting with Mercury. It is the closest planet to the sun, and it's kind of similar to the moon. It's rocky, it's barren, it's pitted with craters, and it is the smallest of the eight planets. It is also known as the speediest planet. So here are some images of it from NASA. Venus is next. It's known as Earth's twin. It is often the brightest object in the night sky. It's covered with a dense blanket of highly reflective clouds. It's typically going to be seen around sunrise or sunset, and it is known as the morning star or the evening star. It's the only planet that takes longer to rotate on its axis than it does to orbit the sun, and it moves in what we call retrograde, so it's moving backwards from east to west. It is also going to be our hottest planet in the solar system. And fun fact, Mercury and Venus are the only planets with no moons, and Earth is going to be the only planet that only has one moon. So here is an image of Venus from NASA. All right, Earth is next. Okay, so it is the only planet in the solar system that's suitable for life. It is the largest of the inner planets, and the average distance from the sun is about 93 million miles. It bulges slightly at the equator. You can kind of tell from this picture, but if you can't, you can look up some images. So here are some more images from NASA. I just think they're so cool. Like, just look at how magnificent God's creation is. Pretty great. All right, so we're going to talk about Earth's moon next. So it is Earth's only natural satellite, satellite being something that orbits it. So it has a lunar month, so it's the elliptical orbit around Earth. All right, so some more information about the moon. So like I mentioned before, a satellite, it's an object that revolves around another object. Near side is the only side that we see, and far side is the other side. And you've probably heard that term before, the far side of the moon. So Maria are the seas. Those are the moon's dark patches. And then the lighter areas that surround the Maria are, I think it's pronounced Terea. Not 100% sure, but we all know that. I tried. So I'm going to say Terea. So the moon's far side, it's heavily cratered than the near side, but it's going to have fewer of the Maria, fewer of the seas. And then they have what they call rays, the light-colored streaks radiating up to thousands of miles away from the crater. And you can tell from this image here some of the different rays. All right, moon phases are next. We're going to start with the new moon. So this is where the sunlit side of the moon is turned away from the earth and it's completely hidden from view. Next is what we call the waxing crescent. So wax means that something is going to gradually grow larger. So like a little sliver becomes visible. Then we have our first quarter moon. So basically half of the moon is visible. So then we have waxing gibbous, so waxing it's still growing, the visible moon seems to bulge. And then we have our full moon, so the entire face of the moon is illuminated, it occurs 14 to 15 days after the new moon. Everyone always says that people go crazy on the new moon, but you know, who really knows? Waning gibbous is next. So waning means to gradually decrease in size and it appears to bulge, okay? Next, we have what's called the third quarter moon. So it's the last quarter moon and it's where only half of the moon is visible. Then you're gonna have your waning crescent. Again, you can just see a little sliver of the moon 
and then the cycle repeats. All right, solar eclipse. Um, of course, we talked about these a couple years ago, if you guys remember when a solar eclipse occurred. Um, so the new moon is directly between the sun and earth. It's extremely dangerous to look at the sun. I don't know if y'all remember getting those special glasses or whatever. Um, there could be a partial solar eclipse depending on where you are because you had to be in a certain path of totality, if y'all remember that. You could also have a lunar eclipse. So this occurs when the moon is full and it reflects the sun's light. Mars is next. It is known as the red planet. This is going to be because it's kind of a rust color that comes from the iron rich soil. The atmosphere is very thin and it has Olympus Mons. It's known as the largest mountain in the solar system. Now it has two moons, Phobos and Deimos, I believe is how that's pronounced, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, they're kind of tiny in a regular shape, kind of like little potatoes, but you know, pretty neat. So here of course are some pictures from NASA. And that is 10.2.